What's up, Electroheads? It is 2024 and we are still stuck in e-scooter legislation limbo here in the UK. So it's been a while since we made a video on e-scooter legality. So today I'm going to run you through everything that we know to date about electric scooter law in the UK and what that means for you, whether you're an e-scooter owner, aspiring e-scooter owner or somebody who likes to hop on a rental. Currently here in the UK, it is legal to buy an e-scooter. However, you cannot ride your e-scooter on public roads. Roads. You can ride your e-scooter on private land with the landowner's permission. Rental electric scooters are the only way to legally ride an electric scooter on public roads or in other public places in the UK. So the government states this is because they want to gather as much information as possible through trials with operators like Voy and Bird, other e-scooter operators available, who were chosen after an open and competitive process to assess their ability to meet strict safety requirements and high operating standards. For example, the scooter batteries can be monitored to ensure they meet fire safety regulations. E-scooters available through government trials have certain requirements. Their speed is limited and users must have at least a provisional driver's license. Helmets are not required by law, but some operators do reward you for wearing one with things like discounts. And while safety is very important, rentals hold the limitations of localized use, not being able to complete your desired journey from door to door, having to pay per ride, which can soon make it more expensive than actually just buying your own, and can be found just sprawling across pavements. And recently, it was announced that these trials were to be extended until May 2026, which isn't a good signifier for a change in legislation for privately owned electric scooters. So what is the current legislation for privately owned electric scooters? Well, why don't you hit that like button to find out? Go on, just, just right there. Go on. That's it. Nice one. Nice one, E-scooters are classed as motor vehicles under the Road Traffic Act of 1988. 19... 88. You may have also heard the term powered transporter, used to cover a variety of novel and emerging personal transport devices which are powered by a motor, including electric scooters. Judy Harrison, the then Parliamentary Under Secretary of State at the Department for Transport, stated in response to Jim Shannon's request for a summary, as motor vehicles having fewer than four wheels and weighing less than 410 kilograms unladen, e-scooters are classed as motorcycles as defined in section 185 of the Road Traffic Act 1988 and because of their low speed within the subclass of moped. This means that e-scooters have to abide by the same road traffic legislation as mopeds and motorcycles. So it would only be legal to use them on public roads if they could meet the same requirements as motor vehicles like having insurance, tax, a license, registration, which in practice is currently virtually impossible. Right now, you can't even get road insurance for your privately owned electric scooter because they don't meet the motor vehicle requirements and it's all just a hot mess. Laws and categorization from the 80s are being applied to this modern day tech. It is madness. In fact, I want you to drop me a comment and write, it's madness Dalish because it is. Let's let them know and it's bonus points if you spell my name right. But it is frustrating because here at Electroheads, we know what good the regulation of power transporters could bring and it's not just for reducing pollution and tailpipe emissions and easing congestion but with individuals who have mobility issues they could really benefit from this simplified lightweight setup that e-scooters can offer. If you want to find out more on this you can check out my video right here where I speak to Neil who has spina bifida and uses an e-scooter to help him get around and Rob who uses an electric unicycle. Their stories are inspiring and welcome positivity to what can usually be quite negative coverage from biased media looking for shockworthy headlines. So here we are, limited to rent electric scooters for public use. Now, bearing in mind, legislation was amended in July 2020 to allow for rental e-scooter trials in selected areas, and we're coming up to nearly four years of data collection and not much else. So we're essentially lagging behind the whole of Europe. Well, Paris recently did a complete 180 and banned rented electric scooters, which was a worrying sign of the future of e-scooters in France, let alone Europe. But instead, the effect has been to trigger a massive boom in sales of private electric scooters, which are legal there. Now, the Queen's speech in 2022 actually mentioned e-scooters in the transport bill, stating they plan to introduce legislation to allow the government to regulate e-scooters in the 2022 to 23 session. The government would then be able to stipulate that all e-scooters sold met certain standards concerning speed, power, lights, among other things. Now look, that's great. We're all really excited. This is exactly what we wanted to see. Bring in standards to keep dodgy e-scooters out and get quality e-rides on the roads. But times passed. We got a couple of new prime ministers and it looked like e-scooter legislation was pushed to the bottom of the pile of the to-do list. A year later, in 2023, we were primed for more news, but there was no mention of new laws in the King's speech, meaning legislation is delayed. 
Looking through the King's speech today, there is not a single mention of e-scooters or micro-mobility. That's rubbish! However, the government has instead promised to extend existing trials till May 2026. It told the BBC this was to gather further evidence as the technology develops to ensure any future legislation balances safety, user accountability and market growth. But the problem is, this doesn't stop unregulated batteries and substandard e-rides from being sold and bought here, which have been the driving force behind the damning media reports on the rise of battery fires as of late. Education is needed about dodgy products that are giving this industry a bad name. Now, Will covers everything you need to know about the recent rise of e-ride fires and what we can all do to avoid it happening with some very simple tips so you should check it out right here but for now e-scooters occupy a mysteriously gray area in uk law being legal to buy but illegal to use in public it's estimated there are now 1 million private electric scooters owned here and that's with everything going on right now there's a real demand for these vehicles but we now need the right regulation what that is I'll come on to that shortly. All right, then keep your secrets. Since their rapid growth, when sales boomed through 2020, over the years, we've witnessed major crackdowns from police forces across the country to apprehend e-scooter riders, not only on roads, but on pavements. Riding a powered scooter on a pavement as with pedal cycles is an offence under section 72 of the Highway Act 1835. The police can deal with illegal e-scooter use by fixed penalty notices and penalty points for no insurance, not in accordance or riding on pavement offences. Section 165 of the Road Traffic Act 1988 provides the power to seize privately owned electric scooters for driving without insurance or a driving licence. It is for the officer dealing with an incident to investigate and to decide upon the appropriate offence and enforcement action. Now many of you have reached out to us about this telling us your own stories, NHS workers, key workers, commuters trying to get to their jobs, being slapped with a hefty fine, getting their e-scooter seized and given six points on their license. I actually spoke to Kyla who relied on her electric scooter to commute and one day got caught by the popo. You can watch that video right here. Whilst privately owned electric scooters remain unregulated, anyone can be stopped and reprimanded by the police. So unless you want six points on your license. For now, it's either rental scooters or electric bikes. It should be flagged that in recent years, train companies have gotten stricter with electric scooters on their services. After an e-scooter fire broke out on the London Underground's district line, the allowance for them to be carried as luggage on the underground if they are folded was soon revoked. Now, e-scooters and one wheels and unicycles can't be taken on London TfL services. Train companies across the UK have also followed suit. So if you're unsure, best thing to do is just to check their FAQ or reach out to customer support. That being said, legal e-bikes are generally still allowed. So all these years later, from when I first started covering the state of e-scooter regulation, it feels like barely any progress has been made. However, there has been recently a glimmer of hope. Electric scooters could have their very own category of vehicle in the UK, ousting the dinosaur 1988 categorization they currently have. The DFT has announced plans to create a new low speed, zero emission vehicle category to encourage the growth and adoption of light electric vehicles. And e-scooters will be the first vehicles to be included in their own subcategory. So TRL won a DFT technical research contract supported by WMG at the University of Warwick to establish what the future technical requirements of e-scooters should be to ensure that they are as safe as possible for riders and other road users, are inclusive for people with disabilities and are making a net positive contribution towards reducing carbon emissions. The project is estimated to take approximately 10 months. It started in July of 2023, so the results will be out by May 2024. The thing is the DFT will require a transport bill to provide regulatory powers for new LZ EVs, so we're not out of the woods just yet. But if and hopefully when legislation hits the UK, how should it look? Should helmets be mandatory? What should the minimum age of rider be? Should we have license plates or take a theory test to qualify? Now, I actually put this question out to you lot in our community tab and the responses are just as mixed as you would expect. But overall, a lot of you are saying the same things about helmets being mandatory, being at least 16 plus and doing some kind of theory or road test. Now, personally, Personally, I think we should treat them like we do e-bikes, like many other countries already do in Europe. I do think we should be able to go up to a speed
speedier 20 miles per hour for e-rides in general, just like most inner city speed limits dictate, anything less. And bigger vehicles get tetchy, that you're slowing them down, and this can lead to more dangerous maneuvers like tailgating and close overtakes, as I have experienced being limited to 15.5 miles per hour on my legal e-bikes. I do also like the idea of different categories depending on the motor and speed, as some of you have also mentioned. For anything that is more powerful, I'd say it's fair to probably require insurance, but a bigger motor doesn't automatically mean it's a danger. It actually just means it can take on inclines better and carry heavier riders without strain. But the European Transport and Safety Council and UK Parliamentary Advisory Council for Transport Safety, that is a mouthful, published a report in early 2023 on safer technical standards for e-scooters and safer e-scooter usage rules in Europe, stating a 20 kilometer an hour factory set speed limit, a minimum wheel size of 12 inches, a ban on passengers and pavement riding, compulsory helmets, mandatory insurance, and a minimum age of 16. If you're still here, you should definitely hit that subscribe button, by the way. I'll be keeping my eyes on any changes and updating accordingly, so definitely subscribe to stay in the know. It is disappointing that there are over 100 cities across Europe, North America, Asia, who have already embraced e-scooters, and yet here we are, we're still waiting. There is clear demand to further adopt micromobility in the UK, with more than 34 million e-scooter rides having been taken place since 2020. Electric scooters could provide a safe, relatively cheap and much more environmentally friendly method of transport than single occupancy car trips. They could reduce tailpipe emissions massively and open up independent travel for a lot of people that can't afford a car but don't have the space to store a bike. I am still hopeful that legislation will come but we do need to keep talking about it and letting local MPs know how important it is that they are regulated to stop shoddy e-scooters being sold, reduce those fires and get more people commuting on greener transport. But for now, lucky heads, peace out.